What's up YouTube? So making this video kind of got away from me. Last week we had the market, well, our first market. So we did the Tasty Tuesdays Farmer's Market in Newport Ritchie and uh, that went really well. I was happy with it for a first market being out here. Um, sales wise we're okay, but that's kind of expected no matter which market you start out at. You have to sort of build your uh, your group of regular customers over time and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So I didn't sell out at market but I went from the farmers market to uh, this place called Wright's Market which is a natural grocery store. They bought a bunch of stuff at wholesale and then um, and then took whatever I had left back to the farm and the girls from the nursery pretty much wiped me out of everything else. So sold out by the end of the day and that's always a good day. So wanted to give you guys an update on the garden haven't had time to do any other kind of videos but anyways let me get to it try and keep the video a little short we've got crackhead down here she's helping me make the video today a lot of you probably miss her anyways whoop Here's the garden. I'm just gonna go through pretty quick. You guys can see all the different beds. Not too much has changed, and if it has changed, I'll let you know. Cucumbers are doing good. Parsley's coming up. Um, the uh, bok choy is getting really mature. A lot of that's gonna get cropped out pretty darn soon. Um, get that turned into uh, kimchi and maybe some other stuff we'll see i'm gonna try and sell as much as i can this week at market uh, i sold about 20 heads last week which is pretty good but there's a lot in that bed uh salanova's doing good we had a cold front come through like a week and a half ago and it was in the 30s for about three days well the lows were 30s and then it spike up to maybe 60 during the day but Anyways, that little cold front triggered a lot of my lettuce to start bolting because following that three or four days of cold weather, it went up to the high 80s and 90s and lettuce just does not like that. So I lost a decent bit of lettuce due to that, but it, it's, it's fine, it is what it is. Um, I'm not sure if in the last video I mentioned or if I had even done this by then. Um, I, since this carrot bed, all three of these carrot beds actually uh, the germination was pretty poor I went through and seeded with the Jang um, radishes in between the five rows of carrots so there's four rows of radish in between them they'll mature pretty soon um, well they only take about 45 50 days no maybe not even that like 35 to 45 days ish depending on the variety um, so I did two beds with radish and then that one's with turnip and the carrots are spaced out so far and few that I'm sure they'll do fine. Um, kohlrabi's doing pretty good. I also did some multi-sown radish clumps just kind of along this area. I never stand right here and the cucumbers didn't fill it out so I kind of just filled the gap. Might as well use the space. Um, this was all really deep wood chips, so, and it never got compost, so there is some nitrogen problems, but whatever, I'll get something out of it. I could hit it with a little harmony to kind of balance things out, but we'll see how they do as is. Um, they were extra anyways. A lot of my brassicas, uh, they're starting with, okay, so... After the hurricane, or prior to the hurricane, we didn't get any rain for a few weeks. Um, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. The hurricane was the last time it rained for a few weeks, and then about a week ago, just about a week ago, uh, we got dumped on, and there was a ton of rain, and then that drove the humidity up, like, sky high, and with the warm temperatures we've had and the really, really high humidity, we're having a lot of alternate area problems, so I'll start figuring out little ways of dealing with that. I haven't dealt with alternaria in quite a while, 
Um, so, as of right now, I'm just pruning any leaf that I see any sign of it on, and starting there. But I'll keep you guys updated on that little battle. Once the temperatures do start to drop, I think the alternaria problems will kind of slow down a fair bit, but we'll see. Uh, while we're here, the market garden nursery area that I started is doing good. I've got a bunch of stuff that I just seeded the other day. Um, some of the tot soy I just noticed this morning is starting to germinate. Uh, this is like, well, I guess from here to here is a week or two old now. And uh, Salanova is doing good as always. Um, but some of the other lettuces that weren't uh, pelleted seed got raided by ants. And the ants came in and took my seed. Um, but a lot of the other stuff is coming up and doing fine. Willow, no jumping. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Crackhead. Hot. What's up? Be good. No jumping. Um, spinach is doing good. This is kookaburra spinach. Uh, I've actually had this seed for four years and it's I'm pretty impressed with it because it's four year old seed yet it's, I'm getting better germination out of this than I am some of the newer stuff. Um, which could also be temperature, but, uh, anyways, got some Napa cabbage, some bunching onion, um, this is another Asian green, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, Tokyo Bacana, it's pretty good, I actually like to let this go to flower, like, I actually let it bolt, and then I harvest the green, or the little seed heads like you would broccoli, and mark it as, mark it, it as rapini, and it's really really good that way um, I prefer it to using the greens because the greens are almost uh, they're not like a cabbage green they're kind of leafy like a lettuce like thin and I don't know I just think it's kind of weird it might be good in a salad mix but I honestly really like the rapini that it produces um, then we've got the next wave of pak choy so the same stuff that's in that bed right over there and some celery that needs to go out forgot these guys that's all uh new kohlrabi and then this is a dill i'm going to be making a bunch of dill pickles and value adding the cucumbers um don't look at those those are an embarrassment that's all sugar snap peas that i haven't had time to plant mainly because the garden over there wasn't ready for them to go in yet um that's taking a little longer than expected. Uh, we got bunching onions that haven't been planted. They've been sitting there for a little bit and an extra tray of bulb fennel. They'll all go out in that garden over there. Um, everything else doing pretty good. Swiss chard's starting to come around. Uh, white Russian kale is doing really good. I'm impressed with that. Um, with the alternaria problems, I've noticed that the white Russian versus the red Russian does a whole lot better. So this one's not as susceptible to the alternaria fungus as the red Russian is. And I'm noticing that with a few different varieties of crops. Um, like with my broccoli right here, same thing. From about here back is uh, gypsy, and from here to the front of the bed is emerald. And the emerald, I've only picked like three or four leaves with alternaria off of this whole section of the bed. With that back section, there's a lot of whole plants that are just really getting wrecked. Um, and the same goes with the right white Russian. Hardly any leaves come off of this, but the red Russian is really getting messed up. Um, I almost did a video of these two beds the other day, but I just wanted to get it done. I had some stuff come up and it put me in a mood where I didn't want to deal with a video. Um, but anyways, this was two whole beds of head lettuces. This was romaine's. This was half romaine in the back, and the front was bib or uh, butterhead lettuce. <clears throat> and um, anyways, the temperature swings I mentioned earlier uh, threw all of them pretty much into a bolting phase. And I went through and selected the heads that I really liked and the ones that were a little slower to bolt and uh, 
left those and cropped out the rest of the bed and then I go through and it's really easy um, and just break off the outer leaves as these lettuce plants mature and trash that that doesn't taste too good anyways um, and let them grow and they'll get about two and a half three feet maybe and uh, I'll let them flower as soon as the flowers start to dry off I'll cut the whole plant off at the base leave the roots in the soil that's also how I cropped out the bed um, all the roots stay intact and the uh, microbes and the biology and the soil get the feed on that and that's what really builds soil um, but anyways I'll cut that whole lettuce plant off at the base hopefully the camera doesn't die on me um, it's blinking and then put it upside down in a brown bag and let it finish drying but I've got to finish planting in this bed uh, and then I already the same day I did the lettuce I replanted lettuce in the three rows um, anyways let's see if I can make it quick without losing this video beets are doing good broccoli's good beets and broccoli in that bed are good um, this bed of cabbage and mizuna is doing great that bed is a different variety, more susceptible to alternaria. So I'm just learning the varieties and what does best here. Um, spinach is finally coming around. Same with this bed. That was at a uh, space, or seaside, not space. Seaside and red ace. Um, collard greens are rocking it. They're doing great. I'll have a bunch of them at market this week. Mustard's coming up really well. Uh, bulb fennel and uh, bunching onion. They're doing great. As always, I love when the dew is on the leaves. It just looks so good. Um, this bed of carrots is doing great. Uh, you can see some nutrient deficiencies in some patches in the garden. That's usually worked out over time. Um, hopefully that light isn't too bad. Let's see. Kind of use my hand. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, the uh, Hakari turnips are doing good. Carrots are doing good. Arugula came in really well. We'll have arugula probably in a week or two, probably two weeks. Um, it's bed of Salanova. It's doing good. Planted that about a week and a half ago. And just seeded this, not yesterday, but the day before. That's all direct seeded beets. This bed is still empty. I'm like really putting it off to get it planted. But mainly just because as of right now, I'm waiting on the garden way over there to open up and I want to make sure before that opens that I have another spot for the next succession of something before a whole bed gets cropped out again um, this is uh, cilantro came in really well that was pretty old seed too so I'm happy with it and bunching onion and then crazy cucumbers all the way down the front of the bed and I've picked uh, the other day I picked 40 pounds and the week prior to that I think I picked probably about 25 pounds of cucumbers so I'm happy with how all of that is doing I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna get a new battery before I lose the video all right so I'm back at a hundred percent coming through the bamboo looking at the garden I just love it early morning and late evening the, the way the sun hits everything, it just looks so good. Anyways, real quick, wanted to touch base on this. Um, this is all new, so finally kind of convinced Pete that the Centropic area just really isn't producing as much as it could be. This is prime real estate, this whole section of property is south facing super flat really nice land and I don't know it can be a whole lot more productive and so he let me go through and till up I only tilled it just because of the type of grass that he has planted and to break ground literally and um, anyways got the grass tilled I know a lot of you won't like that but Oh well, get over it. Um, so, the type of grass, I can never remember the name. I want to say it starts with an M, but I'm probably wrong. Um, anyways, 
Here's a dead piece of it, but it's got super thick rhizomes. That's actually a pretty thin one. Um, but anyways, there's some big roots in this area and this grass gets super tall and it takes forever to break down. And that's why he planted it here, actually. Um, you can actually see it starting to grow up over here where it wasn't tilled, but it's su it's like it's massive and these blades, once they're dry, they make a great mulch in the centropic rows to uh, help maintain moisture in the soil, build soil a little bit and feed the trees. But um, aside from that, this all can be deep mulched with wood chips. These kind of plants really like the high carbon environment. Yes, when the grass turns brown, it's pretty much just carbon, but um, using wood chips will build soil a little quicker. Anyways, uh, these grass alleys, that's what I'm calling them, I can fit three market garden beds, and I think they're, I think they're about, let's see, 75 feet from end to end. So three 75 foot beds, 30 inches wide, with probably 18 inch walkways in here. Um, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six of these sections. That's gonna add a lot of ground. And with all of this, um, plus the sweet potato patch that's opening up in that far corner, that's gonna be like close to, mm, probably close to another 4,000 square feet of growing space. The market garden I have now is 6,500 square feet. So this will really add to it and uh, really help me increase production throughout the season. But anyways, got all these alleyways tilled up. We'll put um, three wobbler heads down each alley and then top it off with, I don't know, an inch to two inches of um, aged horse manure from the horse farm down the road and then nice compost on top to smother out any weed seeds that may come up from either this or that horse manure. Um, you got to be careful with your horse manures. Any kind of manure nowadays, uh, they just use a lot of herbicides sometimes. Um, these people I think are pretty clean and the manure's been sitting for a really long time so that helps with breaking down that residue and whatever else is in there. Um, really, we just really need the uh, organic matter. So over time, with the right inoculating and the right biology in the soil, you can fix all of those problems. You just have to learn to understand it a little bit. But uh, anyways, I'm stoked about this area. And like I said, over time, once we deep mulch these beds in the centropic rows that soil will become really nice be a whole lot easier to plant into and uh, I'll be able to do like things like squash and cucumbers and um, turmeric and sweet potato probably not sweet potato um, but anything basically in those rows in the wood chips and uh, then your high intense vegetable production would be in those beds but anyways I'm pretty excited one last look at this garden, and then I will run you over to the sweet potato patch just to get a glimpse at that, and then uh, we'll call it quits. Till next week, or the next video, whenever that is. say hi to Shadow. I don't think any of you guys have met Shadow, at least on my channel. Um, I'll do a whole video on him, so stay tuned. Shadow is my boy. I love him. Him and Willow kept me sane over the last year. As weird as that might sound about Willow. Willow, did your crazy self keep me sane? Huh? You keep me from going crazy? They're so dirty. Alright, so bear with me. The neighbor's crazy dog is 
a bit obnoxious. Uh, this was all sweet potato. When I got here, this was all grass back in May. Then we put about eight inches of wood chips. I pulled sweet potato slips from Jim's in his rows that he starts. Um, they're all extra. Got them planted here. They did okay. It was kind of min minimal effort gardening. Um, so I wasn't expecting a ton and I didn't necessarily get a ton. So, um, but it did prep this ground for this time of the year. Um, started building soil. Anyways, those wood chips didn't fully break down. They're about halfway broken down. And then, um, they were still fairly deep. So in order to make, in or gosh, this dog, in order to kind of balance out, let me walk away. Come on, Willow. In order to kind of balance things out, I put about three inches of horse manure down. And then, uh, I'm letting that sit. Well, I let it sit for about a week and then I ran the VCS through it and kind of mixed the wood chips and then that manure. So those two layers got combined um, and I didn't touch the native soil underneath. So I'm looking at this as a compost pile getting turned across the entire garden without damaging the soil below. So this is creating one thick layer of compost and balancing out the nutrients so it breaks down quicker and then I'll top this off with good compost again to bury any weed seeds. And uh, yeah, in probably a month or two, this will be really good. Um, and I'm almost certain that in two months this will all be planted out. But uh, yeah, that's that area. You wanna say bye Willow? Do you want to end the end the video for me? Huh? What do you say? Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, right? Goofy. She's waving. She's like, bye. Adios. Isn't that what we say, Willow? Adios. Anyways, hope you liked the video. Stay tuned. Hopefully I'll get some more time to make some new videos and uh, keep you guys updated. Let me know in the comments what you think. Anyways, happy gardening. God bless. Till next time. Let's go, Willow.